Okay, round two of our doubleheader, louder than ever. Yeah, a little bit of caffeine in the blood, you know. Then again, we're <laughs> new anyway. So, great first the Motor City Mad Mouth show. We had a great first show with Steve Ballesteri. He works for PatsFans.com. Join me. We talked a little bit about the military background. You know, we also had an opportunity to talk about the New England Patriots. Well, you know, Wednesday is second. Our second show is a doubleheader, and that is the Sports Exchange. I'm your host, Scott Morgan, Roth, the Motor City Mad Mouth. I have a chat room out here that the natives are getting restless. But before they get restless, we're going to introduce the crew. Candy Epling, welcome back to the big show, only front front of the camera. Thank you, Scott. Glad to be here. And George Eichhorn and I were the architects of the sports exchange many, many years ago. Before yes, yes, born. yes. I love the name of this show. It yeah. takes me back to those days, Scott. 45 or 44 years, whatever it's been. Yeah, who's counting, right? Yeah. All I know is we're getting older, we're getting heavier, we're getting grayer. <laughs> All right, with that said, the guy that wouldn't know about the sports exchange until recently, the last couple of years, Mr. J.B. Ellis. Well, this is getting older stuff. We're not getting older. <laughs> we're just getting better. There you well, go. That's true. Yeah, but in my case, you better look at my medical bills. And then, but I, I like to think that we are getting better, anyways. You know, I was just texting my sister in law tonight that you know, I wouldn't. I can use a strawberry margarita right now, but I have a sports exchange at the top of the hour. One of the few nice things I've said to my sister in law, who's not named on Esther. Okay, so don't worry. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right. So any, at JB, any rate, let's like, go. Wait, wait a minute, JB. We're like fine wine. We get better exactly. with age, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so Candy, we're getting better, and I, we better get faster with this chat room, boy. You're the one who's got to have a good, solid right hand. Look at this. They're all there waiting for us. And you know what? They Thank were you, a little I in the you, first show. <laughs> you the best of the business. Yeah, yeah they, they were channeling their energy for this. I got called by them two or three times, and I got news for They've been waiting for this show. So with that said, let's talk about the show, Predominantly Hoops Tonight with the final topic being the Masters. So with that said, let's go around the horn here. The NCAA Women's Finals viewership outdrew the Men's National Championship by 18.9 million to 14.8 million. For some reason, I'm not surprised, undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks team defeated Iowa's Caitlin Clark. Well, yeah, who would be surprised, right, when you got Caitlin Clark and all the star powers at the women's game? Well, let's start off with a woman, Candy. What are your thoughts about what we saw for this particular change of events, change of numbers? I think it shows a lot that the women's game has really, um, that Caitlin Clark has really brought to the forefront an excitement about the game of college basketball and especially about women's sports. I think it's about time. Uh, I also wonder, though, because it actually was on ABC, whereas the men's game was on, what, TBS and um tnt the other thing is is it was on sunday so it's on a day that everybody's off whereas the men's game was at 9 p.m eastern time on monday night and so i wonder if that has a little to do with it but hey i'm not gonna complain i love the fact that the women's game has such an excitement about it and had so much viewership i think it's only good it's great for young females that want to play the game as well because it shows them an excitement that fans are starting to come back and starting to back women's basketball. And I hope it only continues to grow. Well, it actually started last year. What are you talking about? I mean, first of all, Caitlin Clark was in there. Who'd they lose to last year? LSU and all that was was a carryover to this year is what it was. And with that said, I'll segue over to George Eichhorn and let's make sure we keep this chat room going because these guys are fast and furious and they're yeah, they've been waiting for yes, that. they are, Scott. Uh, but yeah, it, is, it was a great show. And Candy, I think part of it is also because of, let's face it, there has not been a good long term track record for women's uh, viewership for their basketball championship. I think that's part of the scheduling thing that you just talked about with. The women being on on three o'clock on a on a Sunday afternoon, as opposed to the men, you know, nine o'clock on a Monday night. They, I'm telling you, there were a ton of people that wanted to see that game in person. Those tickets were going for so much money in Cleveland at the arena. Unbelievable, unbelievable! What a great show! What a great effort! And Caitlin takes her her show to the WNBA 
where I know that they are very excited to welcome her into that league. And, and you want to talk about that league growing now with this, with the, with the additions that they have, uh, it's going to just go through the roof, but yeah, the TV ratings said it all Scott. And I mean, it was a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal season for she and Iowa. And of course, hats off to the undefeated South Carolina, the champions. Okay. We'll turn over to Joe. So, I mean, one's on ABC, the other's on TBS. Right away, you're going to have trouble drawing people to TBS. On Monday night, 9 o'clock is a late start. I happened to be in California when the game was on. It ended pretty late for me, and I was in California. So, you know, I couldn't imagine being on the East Coast. And, you know, UConn's from the East Coast, Purdue's from the Midwest. And they, they had to be up pretty late to watch the game. 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, Beautiful. You know, great time to watch. Not sure why they don't do it as a doubleheader. Uh, I think that would be so much better for everybody involved. Everybody would want to watch it. You'd get both championship games back to back. You don't have to have them in the same place, but, you know, I think that would make great sense. Um, you know, as far as the women's out drawing the men, though, that, that's phenomenal. You know, I mean, it was a, a good game. South Carolina undefeated, took care of business. Caitlin Clark, the effect is real. People are interested in her game. People want to watch her. She draws eyes to the sport, which is a great thing to have. The question is, who's going to be next for uh, the women's basketball in the NCAA? Who's going to bring that that draw? Because I'm not sure who it is. We'll wait to see what happens next year. Um, you know, where Caitlin ends up, what team, you know, what league, because, you know, there are all sorts of ridiculous things out there. Uh, so I saw something today about the Houston Rockets. Um, you know, listen, wh- wherever she goes, well, hopefully she performs and does the best of her ability and she makes a boatload of money for her effort, uh, as every athlete should do while it's their time. Uh, and hopefully she enjoys playing the sport. But good, good for the women to outro the men. And good for rocket scientists, too. Look at this guy, Joe. I'm telling you, you got this kind of activity on your network. I'm sure you do. But look at this here. Rocket scientist 69. And I know this guy. I talk to him every day. This guy's a classic. He's a real rocket scientist. Every time I go on some of their calls today, he's not afraid to let me know he got a master's degree in aerospace. I didn't even know about aerospace. Then again, you know, until he sat there and showed, flashed around his degree. And this guy, Rocket Science, all these guys are classic. And, yeah, if we get bigger at bar, bigger Barstool because these guys, hey, more power to them. We'll do what we can to make sure that uh, we make it worth their while as we get to that. Now, here's what I see happening with Caitlin Clark. Item number one, she's a projected pick for the Indiana Fever. From what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, that 36 of the 40 – Indiana Fever games are going to be on national TV. The only ones that I remember in my lifetime that would have this much impact are Larry Bird and Magic Johnson for what they did when the NBA had tape delay. So you want to talk about an impact, 36 of 40, Magic, Larry, it all paints out that way. And she seems like a young lady, great young lady, and she plays well. I mean, she, you know, Let's face the reality, they face a South Carolina Gamecocks team that went undefeated, and I think they're like 109 and three over the last few years. So they're pretty tough. You know, Don Staley's got them playing real well. So everything is looking up to me for the ladies' game. And again, this is the second week in a row I'm talking about women's basketball. So for all you women out there that say he doesn't talk about it, Give me a reason. I'll put it on this show. I'll put it wherever the heck I can have. I mean, you know, if I had a basket bros or basket sisters, for all I know, I'd find it to put it there. But the reality is, is the women do have the WNBA, and they've also, you're talking about ladies that can end up playing in the Olympic Games and dominating the daylights out of there. So this, to me, is a remarkable story. And, you know, Joe, you made a very interesting point. But anything that sounds too good, we know will never happen. I would love to see a ladies' championship adjacent to the men's. You want to talk about, if you think these ratings are good, can you imagine what happened if you have a, a Grand Slam doubleheader like that? Oh, Nelly! I get louder. Don't worry. Thank you, Keith Jackson. Yeah, there you go. That's a Keith Jackson <laughs> reference. 
<laughs> and imagine if they did it in the same city, you know, just have the women play fr Friday and Sunday or Thursday and Sunday and the men play Friday and Sunday. Can you imagine the draw and the, the amount of money that would bring into the city? But what do I know about sports? I, I'm just the guy that talks about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know what, Joe? There's perception and reality. And the way these NCAA people work, they wouldn't put it in the same city. They want to spread the love in two different places so that the revenue is split. But it does make a lot of sense. But then again, well, how many times do we want the college football playoff to be 12 and whatever? And it never happened for 9 million years anyway. So we need to get a show about UCF sports. Okay, rocket scientist, when you're ready to come on the air, I'll let you feed me some UCF sports. But you know what, though? Let me mention this before we go to the next topic. I have a proposition for this chat room. By the way, Travis Bird, thanks for being on the show for the first time. And we hope you come back as well as the rest of the folks that are new to the broadcast tonight. But here's the thing. I have a, I have a challenge to those people in the chat room. And I've been thinking about this all day long. I want you to come up with a controversial topic. Okay, but not religion and sports. And, so that we could go away, not religion and politics. politics. It's okay. <laughs> All right, and I want you to come up with those ideas, and I'll, I'm going to put them on Pundit's Pundit. I guarantee you I will put something in Pundit's Pundit which will be stronger than gunpowder. Okay, so I'm challenging everyone in that chat room, everyone, come up with one good topic, controversial, every week in Pundit's Pundit, okay? And, and, I, that's I'll say, and I, I'll say that those that want Not rocket that scientists... One, though, Rocket Scientist wants a show about UCF sports. We could always do an episode of Fire Up Florida about UCF sports. Yeah, but Joshua, you gotta come on. Of, yeah, but yeah, there you go. And Joshua Dorr, uh, unfortunately, that may be the only topic I won't talk about is transgenders because I don't know if I'm going to get Caitlyn Jenner to whack me with an aluminum bat. So I'll, I'll stay away from that. But no, pretty much just about anything, but not that in politics. I, I don't want to get into that discussion. Or if I do find myself on it, I'll get off the show and let somebody else bold enough to deal with that. I'm I'm not going on that show. But anyways. All right, so that's a challenge. Everybody in the chat room, okay, you go out there and come up with something for pun it, pun it. You send it to us. I'll write it down. And boom. And you say Zoom. Okay. Yeah, am I fired up? Yeah, I guess so. I always get fired up and need broadcast. Why not? Stick a microphone in front of me. You know what a microphone like it me is? <laughs> it's like a kid with a lollipop. You can never have it. You can never have it enough. <laughs> we'll figure that out. Look at Ellis. He's hearing all this stuff for the first time. He said, I know exactly no, he what knows. he's all about. Yeah, he knows. He, Ellis knows. I mean, he's taking it nine million days all along. So there you have it. Okay, challenge accepted. Man mouth, there you go, Joshua Dorr. You like to come up with ideas? Don't worry. I'll put these ideas for fruition because one of them will be on a, on our last segment. All right. Segment number two. Hats off to retiring Stanford women's basketball coach, Ter Van Devere after 28 years. Get this woman's record, okay? 38. 38. What did I say? You said 28. All right, well, we'll add 10. Okay, 28. Maybe my penmanship is that bad. Well, 38, 28, 10 years. Well, I'll take the 38. It looks even better. 1,216 wins. Three time NCAA champ. 15 time Pac 12 champion. Of course, won't be anymore because there's no Pac 12. Five time national coach of the year. Started as an unpaid grad assistant. Winningest head coach in NCAA history. Well, Miss Van Der Beer got out at the right time. She won't have to travel to those ACC schools, but let's celebrate her career, Candy. This is the woman's show. So what do you think about Tara? I think that's an impressive, uh, impressive resume. She has 1,216 victories with Idaho, Ohio State, and Stanford. She overtook Mike Krzyzewski's record earlier this season. She said basketball is the greatest group project there is, and I'm so incredibly thankful for every person who has supported me and our teams throughout my coaching career. She's been spoiled to coach the best and brightest at one of the world's foremost institutions for nearly four decades, coupled with her time at Ohio State and I Idaho, and as head coach of the United States national team, it has been an unforgettable ride. The joy for me was in the journey of each season, seeing a group of young women work hard for each other and form an unbreakable bond. Winning was a byproduct. I've lo loved the game of basketball since I was a little girl, and it has given me so much throughout my life. 
I hope I've been able to give at least a little bit back. As a coach that's coached for that long, you've obviously given back to your to the girls that you've coached. How cool is it that as a young girl, you played a sport that you loved, then you got to coach the sport that you love. If we could all be so fortunate to do what we love to do and get paid for it, to coach for a team, you know, a game, people play a game, but to instill the one thing I'm going to say about coaches, especially probably at the college level is you can instill and help transform and grow and mature young females. And that is not only a great thing to do for as a paid profession, but it's a noble thing to do too, just like teaching. You can help mold people to be better, to work as a group. And I give her a lot of credit because 38 years, as I sit here and think about how long I've been in my profession, in September, it'll be 33 years for me. So she's been doing it 38 years. That's awesome. Great career. Loved, loved, love hearing about it. But I, I can almost guarantee that part of why she's getting out now, but besides it's, she's had a good career. NIL probably has a lot to do with some of these coaches leaving the game now. I'd say NIL has everything to do with these coaches leaving the game now. Think about it. All the veteran coaches that have left. Nick Saban, of all people, got out of there earlier. And, you know, the one thing that I, about the women's game that very few people have to understand, and I, I've even paid attention to it many years ago, if there's a mother of this game, it's Pat Summit. It, she really is. I mean, Tara Vanderveer has done unbelievable stuff. Don Staley's doing. And who do you have the woman from Rutgers? Was it Vivian Stringer has done some incredible stuff over there? But Pat Summit and now Tara Vanderveer, who probably doesn't go ahead and get much publicity as much should because she's on the West Coast anyway. So uh, kudos to her. I mean, you know, but Joe Ellis, what are your thoughts about Tara? Listen, to be around 38 years coaching in any sport, says all you need to know because you don't last that long if you're not really good at what you do and in college it's not just about winning you know we see the wins but in a school like Stanford it's a lot more than winning academics is a huge part of what they do at Stanford we're not talking about you know UC Irvine and that's not insulting UC Irvine but Stanford is an elite college you know not many can can compare to that except for maybe the Ivy League schools so when you go to Stanford, it's it's very similar. Mm-hmm. So to be in that position for 38 years, and then on top of that, to have a track record of winning, you know, great for her. What a way to live out your dream and to to mold so many young women uh, for the future. George, keep it going in the chat room, boy. They're coming fast. I know, I know. Well, again, it's another example of a wonderful lady a wonderful coach and she she has uh affected the lives of so many young women like you said candy i mean this is where a coach really really excels and she can affect the lives of those women that are going to have a great future ahead of them you're right joe this is a great school the stanford cardinal i mean that university is right up there as far as uh, engineers and and all kinds of professions uh, that people graduate from just very, very uh, noteworthy school. Stanford always has been. And Ms. and Coach Vandeveer, I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? She's been to sweet 16s. She's been to 14 final fours. Like you said, Scott, 1,216 victories combined at these great schools, Stanford, Ohio State, and Idaho, three national championships. What a wonderful job. What a wonderful way to go out, too. Even though you lost this year, hey, you can put your head up high always because you did a hell of a job and you were one of the best women's NCAA basketball coaches, I believe, that ever walked the face of this earth. All right, Candy, put that chat up there by Christian Bartram about going being smart to go to Stanford. I want to address that very quickly, okay? You know what, Christian? That's the biggest understatement on the planet. No doubt about that. You are you hit a bullseye with that comment, Christian. Good stuff, pal. 
So yeah, no, you that, like everybody thought it was a very high academic place. I actually was out there and toured the university many years ago when I was covering a Lions game at Candlestick Park covering with the 49ers. So it's pretty interesting. You know, they were the Cardinals and then they changed it to the Cardinals. So it just shows you the type of institution that it really is. Now, with that said, let's hop on over to the men's side. Danny Hurley, UConn men are now now the, the UConn program is six and zero in NCAA final games. This year they won all of their March Madness games by double digits. But get this: Stetson, okay, ninety one to fifty two, Northwestern seventy five fifty eight. Only would have can only imagine what FAU would have had to have gone through. That just expedited Dusty May's decision to go to Michigan, but seventy five fifty eight. San Diego State got a beating a year ago, and they got it again. This time, 82 to 52. Illinois, 77 to 52. Alabama, 86 72. Purdue, 75 60. Three Big Ten teams. So, Joe, I'm going to turn to you first, okay? <clears throat> you covered the Big East tournament, and you had a chance to see Connecticut, right? You knew they were good, but did you think that they would walk through the tournament and beat teams all by double digits? They are the probably one of the best teams I've ever got to witness play. And that, that says a lot because I've seen a lot of college basketball and a lot of basketball in my time. They, the last time they were challenged was by St. John's. And, you know, what I noticed is they, they have a, a style where they almost, you know, they, they can play inside, they can play outside. They have a big man, Klingon, who's phenomenal. They have great perimeter players. They're always looking to make the extra pass. If, if I have an open shot, but you have a, another shot that's a little bit better, they're so unselfish in moving the ball. They rebound. They run. They do everything. I've never seen a team that is that complete. And what impressed me most, and especially at the Big East tournament, was you know, I was looking over the roster. It, it was a lot of newer guys because they lost a bunch of to graduating youth last year. So it wasn't just like they brought the same guys back from last year and they won another championship. No, they brought new guys in and they played even better. It was really impressive to see. You know what? <clears throat> Before we turn over to George, Jonathan Hydock has an interesting thing about Russell Media. So I'll just put it on. It's a little different. And then I'll go back to everybody else. Can you guys talk about Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania win? Biggest sporting event this week. I don't know anything about it, but I open it up to any of you guys to do it. I can tell you there's a show called Top Rope Talk on Monday nights. They cover wrestling specifically. I don't watch any wrestling. I used to years ago, but I couldn't tell you. If Cody Rhodes won, I'm taking your word on it, Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, you know, there you go. Give it another uh, plug one more time, JB, about this show. <clears throat> oh, Top Rope Talk. Denzel Snipes has it every Monday night. Uh, great show. Okay, there you go. All right, there you go, Jonathan. All right, we'll turn it over to George. Well, it's a great, great story. I'm telling you, UConn is a great story. Listen to this. This guy, Dan Hurley. He's got Polish blood in him. And as some of you know, I'm involved with the National Polish American Sports Hall of Fame. So my question is, is when are we going to be able to vote you in, Dan? Bobby Hurley is already in the Polish Hall of Fame. Now we got to get you in, Danny boy. What a great job. Championships two years in a row. Uh, I can't agree more than what J.B. Ellis said. I mean, after last year, they said, oh, this guy's leaving. This guy's leaving. Oh, yeah? Well, what did they do? They come back with another great, great performance. Um, it, it's just incredible. I mean, Scott read all the teams they beat, you know, and it's not easy. Come on, winning the NCAA tournament, you had to go through, like you said, Stetson, Northwestern, San Diego State, Illinois, Alabama, and Purdue. But uh, you did it, uh, and, and you're right at the top of the game, a final uh, conference record of 18 and two. And then overall they were 37 and three. So um, I know the ratings weren't as good as the women's ratings, but I'm telling you that was one heck of a feat that UConn pulled, even though I went on record last week, as you know, Scott, uh, in, in taking Purdue to win it all. But um, 
there's no denying it. Uh, the Hurley boys are at it again and, and coming up with all these championships puts a big smile on my face because I like that Polish blood too. <laughs> and by the way, Kyle, you want us to talk about pickleball, I'll be more than happy to invite you on the show. We'll give you 10, 15 minutes to do it. One of the things that we're considering doing here, and Denzel Snipes brought it up, is anybody that wants to talk about something, if it's interesting, we'll put you on for five or 10 minutes. How's that sound? You're really that passionate about it? We'll do it. But meanwhile, pickleball, I don't know, we'll see. Everything, everything's on the table. Uh, bad news, Josh, we may not have a chance to get to the Masters yet because we're running behind on time. Kidding with you. God only knows. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you want to lay the fire under Joshua door, that would be the way to do it. <laughs> All right, who's left on this one? Andy. Andy, go ahead. The most illuminating thing about UConn's run is that you have a multitude of options when it comes to your favorite stat from the dominant stretch. Maybe it's that the Huskies never trailed in the second half of the game in the tournament. Perhaps it's the obscene 30 to 0 run against Illinois in the Elite Eight. Defense enthusiasts might point to UConn allowing Purdue to just make to make just one three pointer the entire title game. However, the one that resonates most stretches over both NCAA tournaments and shows just how elite a coach Hurley has become in this era. UConn's 2023 NCAA tournament run, 20 plus average scoring margin. UConn's 2024 NCAA tournament run, 23.3 average scoring margin. Florida's back-to-back -back titles in 2006 and 7 were incredible, impressive feats. But the Gators were blessed by the return of five future NBA draft picks that played significant minutes in jo Joachim Noah, Al Horford, Torin Green, Corey Brewer, and Chris Richard. UConn did not have that same luxury. The 2023 champs were led by Adam Saganoa, Jordan Hawkins, who combined to average over 33 points per game. O only Tristan Newton and Alex Carabin returned among the players in the top seven for minutes played. So that shows you how good that team was, that they did it with new players. I mean, so it's not like, like they said, the Gators returned all the same players. FAU, they returned most of their same players, and they couldn't make it. That shows you how dominant UConn has been the last two years and how they're doing it, and you got to give credit to their coach. Because right, if they're doing it with new players, you have to. We got we got to put this chat up here. I don't normally use this terminology, but you know what? I'm going to put this one up here, and I'll, I know I'll deal with them tomorrow. You got me there, Scott. That was a good ball bust when I was messing with them about the master. So that's all right, Joshua. I, I you know, but maybe I should pull it off because maybe we need to implement a new policy. If you want the master bad enough, Candy, why don't you get Joshua the link and we'll get him to talk about it. Oh, then again, um, as rocket, as what do you say, our man? Rocket scientists would say, what is he? What do we call him now? We call him the uh, Florida fried chicken because he's not ready to come on yet, but that's okay. Well, one of these days we'll get him on here. Uh, but Tommy Lasorda once had a saying, "Does because God delays does not mean that God denies. And the last thing we, he ever thought about it would be Joshua Door. Okay, but at any rate, that's that. As far as I'm concerned, Danny Hurley is smarter than most people even realize. When it, they were looking at the Kentucky job, he said, you know what happened if I, I get the Kentucky job? I get divorced because now I got to, you know, my wife is from New Jersey is what she said, okay? He's from New Jersey. I'm trying to get closer to New Jersey. I end up in Kentucky. And he said, I'm just starting to make money. I don't need a divorce. Smart man. That's why he's going to stay at UConn. And that's why he's going to win a lot at UConn. All right. Well, I'll stay on the coach's theme one more time. Before we get to the Masters, Joshua, you really, this is your opportunity to hit the big time, okay? You've got to go ahead and come on, Joshua. Everybody wants you in here. Let the real Joshua Thor stand up. Uh, I got a uh, Florida fried chicken, not in the furniture business. Kidding with you. I'll hear it tomorrow on FaceTime anyways. It doesn't matter. But John Calipari took a $1.5 million less per year from Kentucky to go to a five-year deal at Arkansas. You know what? Let me go ahead and start this one out. Number one, Cal Perry started to see the writing on the wall. Okay. He knew they're evaluating him year in and year out. So what does he do? 
the only thing a smart Calipari should do. Take the five years and go ahead and leave and have a little less less money. They'll probably have an incentives anyways for him to recruit the $1.5 million. Well, Kentucky makes out well here because they don't have to pay the $33 million that they would have owed him if they would have fired him. So, you know what, Calipari, opportunity to go out there and see what he can do at Arkansas. But for all you people out there, at least you know the Oakland Golden Grizzlies were will be a trivia question down the road as a team that was John Calipari's last game ever as a Kentucky Wildcat. All right, we got some new people in here. So let's go out there. And, Candy, let's go to the chat room. I'll turn over to everybody else. All right. Let's go back upstairs and see how far they go. All right, Dusty, glad, thank you for being here. Glad to have you. Looking forward to seeing you. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so already. It's all right. So it's Jesse Mascot. All right, whatever. I can't keep track with all these different names anyway, but all I know is I read them so I don't have to get FaceTime calls in the middle of the night or early in the morning or whatever they come. All right. With that said, Don Calipari, George. Well, I tell you what, arguably the best job in college basketball is at Kentucky, and now it's wide open. It's on the market. Uh, this was certainly a blockbuster move. I know they obviously were not happy with that performance, and like you said, little old 14th seed Oakland University from Rochester, Michigan, uh, pulled the pulled the shocker of all time there. And uh, Cal Perry probably would have been all set for next season, even though he would have still been on the hot seat. But, um, you know, I think this this is better for both parties. I really do. I think John needed to get out of there, get a start somewhere else. Arkansas is a good program, good school. And, you know, always been strong in football over the years. I go way back to when they had some really great teams, but in basketball as well of late. But, um, you know, Cal Perry, you know, he counts all that money, man. He gets millions and millions of dollars, but I'm telling you, he better learn how to win and not take these 14, 16, or 15 seeds lightly after suffering those losses to, uh, I think it was St. Peter's, uh, 15 seed, and then Oakland, you know, the 14th seed. So bye-bye, John. Arkansas is ready for you. That's where our yeah. buddy George Kell came from, Arkansas. All right, you know what? Travis Bird does make an excellent comment. Kentucky is a football school now. You know what? They really are starting to trend toward being a football school. I, I, I yeah. think it's one of the Stoop brothers. Is that Mark Stoops has done a really good job up there in Kentucky. Otherwise, they hadn't. But great point. I'm glad you brought that That's up, true. Travis. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, I mean, for many, many years. And if you've never been to Rupp Arena, you got to go there once. And I had an opportunity to cover an FAU game in back-to-back -back days when they went to the Motor City Bowl, I think it was where we ended up, FAU took on Central Michigan. I had to drive through the middle of the night in dense fog and made it to Rupp Arena. So if you've never been to Rupp Arena, you got to get there. It's just unbelievable. It really is. So, yeah, I mean, John, you did what you had to do. But with that said, Joe, what are your thoughts about Calipari staying in the Southeastern Conference? Kind of a joke that you would leave Kentucky to go to Arkansas. <laughs> that would be like, you know, leaving the Yankees. I'm the manager of the Yankees. You know what? I don't want to be the manager of the Yankees anymore. I am going to go be the manager of the Colorado Rockies. Like, why? It's, you know, at least Colorado is beautiful. The Rocky Mountains are nice. Arkansas, I'm not getting the draw. You know, obviously, he couldn't handle coaching in Kentucky. He couldn't handle the pressure. He couldn't put together a winning team because he couldn't keep the guys in school because he was just recruiting guys that were going to play at the next level and they were going to be there for a year and leave. So he wasn't building a team. He was just recruiting and getting them ready for the NBA. But that's not what being a college coach is about. <laughs> being a college coach is building a team and getting the men ready or the women ready for the next phase of their life. You know who's a great coach? Steve Lavin. Right. right now in San Diego. Does that really well. Another guy you know, well, uh, Scott, uh, Mike Jarvis. Great coach. Oh, yeah. You know, people that, that develop young men and women, those are great coaches. Calipari's a, a great recruiter, right. and, you know, he'll hang out with the guy for the year, and then he'll leave. But then again, when you're moving from Kentucky to Arkansas, I don't get it. You know, I mean, 
Hey, in listen, I won't say this much. Before they built their new place, I did see a game over at the Barnhill Arena in Arkansas, and, and that's a cool place. Now, I want to refer to a comment that Rocket Scientist said. I don't think Scott is going to be able to read all of this. You know what? Rocket Scientist, you are smart because you know why I say you're smart? I never took an Evelyn Wood speed reading course, so don't worry. I can't wait for you to get my book, and you go ahead and take an Evelyn Wood speed reading course as well there, pal. So with that said, okay, Candy, while we're on – well, here, you know what? We'll go through George, and then Candy can do all the business here before we go to the Masters. So who's next? It would be me, Scott. Go ahead, Candy. So – he signed a five-year contract with a base annual salary of $7 million. The deal includes a $1 million signing bonus and features retention bonuses of $500,000 each year of the contract, along with a one-time bonus for making the NCAA tournament, reaching the second round, Sweet 16, Final Four, and winning a national championship. He's 65. He replaces Eric Musselman and inherits a program that went 16 and 17 last season after three consecutive NC2A tournament appearances, including the Sweet 16 a year ago. Joe, I think the reason why he does take this job is because he's kind of tired of being the one and dones and having all of his players move on. I think he wants to mold mold these kids and keep them around for more than one year, and that's why he finds this is a different challenge because I think everybody has molded him as a one and done. He's always got these one and gun. He's a re good recruiter, but he thinks he's more than that. And he wants to prove it by going to Arkansas. That's why I think he took this job. Hey, Jacob Solomon says, I hate how Scott completely dismisses candy after this absolute lesson. You know, there's a saying out there that says, holy moly. What are you talking about? Let me tell you one thing, and I can say whatever I'm going to say here. Candy Evelyn is the most valuable player of everything we do around here. I put these shows together, create a lot of different things, but I'm going to tell you one thing. Without her, the South Florida Tribune would not be what it is. The Sideline Sports website would not be what it is. These shows wouldn't be where they are. So <clears throat> Solomon, uh, let me say, Solomon, uh, Scott says, okay, Candy Evelyn is an MVP, okay, and – there's no need to learn a lesson from that. That's called a F-A-C-T. And you know what that stands for? Fact. And you know what? For all the people that excel on this show, I, I love it. Because at least I know I've been around there to hopefully help them out just a little. You know, so, you know, Tomlin, I do like your comment. And I like to go ahead and mention a lot of things like that. But, you know, I'm going to also mention a shout out to Matt Siegerman, the number one game fan. He is tuned in but not on the chat. Thank you very much, Joshua, for bringing that up. Well, Solomon, Simon says, I don't underrate Candy Ebling because I know what she does. Mark my word. Should she retire from her day job, she'll have offers off the Wang Wang being able to do these websites and put these production. You know, if you don't believe me, ask George Icorn and J.B. Ellis. They'll probably back, I know they'll back that up, right, guys? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, so I used to say Solomon, Simon said, but now I have to say Solomon said because it does sound pretty good, though. <laughs> All right, so everybody speak their piece on John Calipari. The only thing yeah. I'll say is that John Calipari admitted that he felt the Kentucky Wildcats needed a fresh voice. Okay, probably they did it after a while. One and Duns, I don't think you'll see many of them in Arkansas. But if you've ever been to Barnhill Arena, that's a cool place, man. Those people, it, I'll tell you. Don't wear a long sleeve shirt there, or you'll have as much body water as there is in the Atlantic or Gulf of Mexico. It is unbelievable. I went there one time when I went on a major trip and I knocked out 20 some odd states. George, remember getting me that credential down at the University of Arkansas? Yeah. That was old Barnhill Arena, folks. I've been there. And I know what those Arkansas people, obviously, they've graduated. So, Solomon, we appreciate your input. We do. And let's see what else we got here. We got Masters call. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. We have run out of time for the Masters. All right. This concludes this edition of Florida. Just kidding. Okay. But, <laughs> all right. I'm not going to kid about this, Candy. Why don't you let everybody know that we have some information that we want to get out there before we talk Masters talk. So if you see the red subscribe button, that means you haven't subscribed. Hit that button. Subscribe to us. Watch all of our shows. 
And if you have subscribed, like there's a lot of people I know in this chat room that have, share it with all of your friends. That's how we grow. And that's how more and more people listen. And that's what we're all about. That's what we're here for is to talk to you guys. We want you guys to share ideas that you want us to talk about, but we want more subscribers. So if you like to listen to the podcast version, you can. Audio version is on iHeartRadio, Google, Apple, CastBox, Deezer, wherever you get your podcast from. We have a website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. We also, Scott writes, George writes, JB actually writes too. And I take pictures. Go check out our website. If you have show ideas and you are afraid to come in the chat, I don't know why you'd be afraid to be in the chat, or you're afraid to come on, you can always email us your ideas at SouthFloridaTribune at gmail.com. Then there is this thing, you know, this, this book thing. I, someone wrote a book in this panel. Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. I don't know. Whose name is that on that book? Oh, yeah. It's Motor City Madmouth. Scott Morgan Roth. And George Icorn wrote the foreword. So they are both in this book. You got to grab it. You got to see the, the picture of the young Scott Motor City Madmouth with a young Muhammad Ali. Go buy that book, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, or Apple Books. Back to you, Scott. All right. Let's put that comment up with Jacob Salm. That's all I wanted was appreciation. So what I want you to do is put that one up, okay? Put that comment up there. And now I want you to put the book there because you want appreciation. Here's what I, I want some appreciation, Solomon, okay? Motor Mouth says, forget Simon says, this is Motor Mouth talking now. Motor Mouth says, uh, Jacob Solomon, go out there and purchase that book. I don't think it's going to take food off your table. In fact, if anything, if you learn this game well enough, it will probably put a lot of food on your table. So there you go. Your, your, your homework here uh, right now here, Jacob Solomon, is to pull your credit card out and go over to Amazon. Okay, put it in the cart and give them your credit card. And I'm sure that Amazon will have that book before you can snap your finger. And I can say that you're appreciated again on the next episode, which, by the way, is tomorrow on Pundit Punnett. So there's a challenge there, Solomon. I'll give you all the appreciation you can handle, my friend. I love it when we have all these friends in the chat. It gets me more fired up, man. Look at this stuff. I don't even need caffeine for this. I don't need caffeine, okay? I got you people in the chat room. And yeah, Joshua George got a great mind. Think alike. You know it, my brother. So go out there, Solomon. Go get the book. Everybody's going to learn. It's a textbook. It's old school media versus new school media. Do I ever shut up? No. And I won't until I'm dead. And even then, I won't die quietly. All right. With that said. Yes. I got one second, Scott. Cody Rhodes is the new undisputed WWE champion. How about that? There you go. Okay. There you go. I don't know. I figured they, they wanted to know about that. Any okay. relation to Dusty Rhodes? I think it's his son. Okay. Jacob Solomon. Solomon says, couldn't agree more. Now we're getting some pretty good stuff. Get the buck, oh. Solomon. I'm, I would love to be able to quiz you on it as well. All right, Josh, you can barely read. Well, uh, whatever. Eventually I think, we're gonna go Scott, we also together. have to report that Otani's ex-translator negotiating a guilty plea. So he is guilty. Yep. All right, look at this. Now Jacob's getting his spirit. Get fired up. You know I'll put that thing on there, boy. All right, there you go. All right, look at all this good stuff here. Candy giving breaking news updates. All right, do you really want to? All right, Joshua, can you handle it now? Scott is on Mountain Dew. Yeah, you know what, uh, Delos, I was on it for a long time. Okay, but not on it now. I have a little bit of Diet Coke left in the Wendy's thing that I got for dinner tonight. All right, at long last, okay, this is for Joshua Dore. We're talking about the Masters Tournament. Tomorrow. So before I get to this topic, okay, I want to ask the panel this. Do you like the fact that the Masters comes after the March Madness? Do you think that's a perfect time for it? Joe, we'll start with you. I don't know. I mean, it's the Masters. It's whatever it is it is. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm not going to watch until Sunday. Okay. I guess, you know, what's interesting about this, though, it almost makes me wonder about the Daytona 500 being the Super Bowl, the first race of the year. And some of this stuff about there, go ahead and make any sense? I don't know. 
But all right, George, I'll throw it up to you about this question before I get to the real meat of this topic. I think, Scott, it's a beautiful setting. It is the best time of year. Uh, this year it fell after Easter Sunday. It fell after the Final Four. I think it's a great, great time of year. And Jim Nance and CBS just do one hell of a job and have been doing a great job for years and years and years. It is definitely on my bucket list to go to cover a Masters tournament one of these years. I see Scotty Scheffler. Uh, most experts have him right at the top of, of winning this tournament. But uh, Tiger Woods is making another comeback. The poor guy's made a lot of them. And, and we just hope that he, he can shoot well enough to, uh, to make the cut. But, uh, yeah, I like when it's held. You know, everything is green and and, and, and blooming in, in the state of Georgia at this time. And Augusta does a great job with it. All right. Well, let's go to Joshua Dorff's position. I have Rory. Well, you know, it's pretty hard to bet against this guy. Yeah. All right. Scott sounds like he smoked some reefer, which is always a good thing, meaning weed. I know what that is, but all right. <laughs> you can go out there. Uh, all right, Trav, please give us a weather report. All right. Let's see. Scott, let's keep going. Keep going to the chat because like uh, rocket scientist said, I can't read that fast. So. But I should sure talk it. <laughs> so, all right. So, we got Joe. Now, what about you, Candy? Right time of the year for it? I think it's perfect time of year because, let's face it, the NFL draft isn't here. Free agency is done. March Madness is done. The opening week of baseball has passed us. So, we're into the second week, and baseball's a long season. So, it's a great time to, to bring in – the only sport I would say that's really in high gear that would be the other thing that you'd be opposing and watching would be, and I know some of the panel, the comments in the commentary yet haven't gone there yet, but the NHL. Because the NHL is in their last week of the season. As of what the other night, there were five teams vying for two spots yet in the playoffs. They're all trying to get in. Um, last minute push and playoff. So besides them, and like NBA still has a couple more games, not too many more games yet in their regular season. They haven't started the playoffs. So really it is a good time because nobody is, you know, focused in on a lot of other things. So um, D-Lo's 77 better be hearing more hockey talk. See, I just brought it up. But the Masters, it's a perfect time. Great tournament. Am I a big golf fan? No. But that doesn't mean I don't think we should be talking about it and watching it and supporting it. I'm all for sports. Well, let's face reality. Some tournaments are in their regular part of the year. And this has certainly been when it's been held forever. So just like certain times are what they are. So I'm like Joe, though. Let, I'll wait till the final day and then I'll get interested. I will. I have too many other things going on right now, like spring games. I got the Miami Hurricane spring game. I have the Miami Marlins on Sunday. And, of course, I'm going to be leaving town next week. So, you know, I'll, I'm the interstate intimidator on the road. That's why my wife goes out there and needs a tablet every time I get behind the wheel. And I call that racing. The old thing is you just don't get caught doing it. And I just have to know when not to do it. And we'll leave it at that because I don't want all these cops out there listening to me anyways. All right. But the real big topic of the week, though, for the Masters comes from John Rahm, who calls her the live golf to move to a 72-hole format. The current Masters champion joined Liv for a purported $350 million, okay, for a multi-year after previously dismissing their 54-hole event. Shotgun starts with no cut rules. Rom is one of 13 Liv golfers, get this, okay, that are actually going to be competing in the Masters this week. 13, okay. And, yes, d Lowe's, you're right. I do meditate. When I'm driving, it's the best thing I could do for somebody as hard. High energy as I am. D Lowe's GMTA brother. Great minds think alike. You better all learn it. Okay. So with that said, George, the main storyline, 13 live golfers in there. What do you think? Do you think it should go to 72 holes or stay at 54? No, I think they should be playing 72 holes at their tournament. They just had one at uh Trump's golf course down in Durrell, Miami area. And um, they do some things that are different. They have a team team component to that tour. They play music. They play music when the guys are teeing off. It's kind of interesting, kind of like a smooth, jazzy kind of stuff. It's different. And I've never seen that before at a golf tournament. But, look, come on. These two organizations must get together. They must settle their differences. Scott, just like you and I saw when we had that IndyCar 
and that split with uh, Tony George and, and, and the IndyCar family and, and that whole fiasco there where uh, they were facing off against each other at the Indy 500 versus the Michigan or US mm-hmm. 500, they called it, at, at Michigan Speedway. But mm-hmm. this Live Tour and this PGA Tour, they're hurting each other because the Live Tour doesn't have enough quantity-wise of the golfers, and they're paying them so handsomely. And then the PGA Tour, of course, has lost so many of the big names that their crowds are going to go down if they haven't already. So um, I think there's room for two of them, but I'd like to see them come together eventually. Yeah, I would. Well, they, were, they were supposed to come together, and why it never happened is anybody's guess. So yeah. all right, let's yep. go back to my buddy out here, Jacob. I'll tell you, I like picking on this guy tonight. I cooled down. I want to see him fired up. Let me tell you, Jacob, what you don't want to see is how many medications I have to take every night, okay? So, you know, my mind works in mysterious ways, and everybody will tell you that to begin with, so it is what it is. So only a matter of time before the Joshua Door PGA come together. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for it. Yeah. And so with that said, Candy, what do you think? Should it be 72 or stay at 54? 72. Yeah. I think it it should go to seventy two. I let's face it. There's eighty nine p- players in the Masters, and only thirteen are from the Live. Eighty nine competing in the Masters, and only thirteen are from Live. Okay, I'm good. There you go. Well, all right, rocket scientist, back to him, Scott. Want Jacob on the show? You better believe I do. Get Jacob in front of me. I'll give him appreciation. Scott loves Jacob. Well, don't push it. I. I the only person I love is my wife right now, so that's all that matters. Don't take it personal, but if you love your wife, okay. But I like you, okay. I like you. I like when people challenge me like that. You know, love is a sacred word, okay. Scott, I need a parley recommendation. What is a parley? I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm trying to. All right. I don't know. I'm not a big gambler. But if you want to go to a big gambler, I have other family members that do, but I'm not one of those. So you got to wash the dishes, okay. Buy paper plates, okay. So. Uh, <laughs> So uh, who's who's left? Is it you, Jamie. Joe? So 54, 72, it's what makes them different, the LIV and the PGA. The LIV is just a joke anyway. It, it's, you know, a bunch of guys that can't hack beat on the PGA that got want to have money. It'll never be as prestigious as the PGA. No matter what you do, it's, you know, it's just second rate. And if you want to play in a second rate tour, John Rahm, Good for you, buddy. You'll be one of 13 guys that gets to go to the Masters from the LIV. If you want to play in a real tour, there's the PGA. Yeah, I know they work together now and all that, but it's you know it's like you're in the G League or whatever they call the NBA Developmental League now. You know, you're not an NBA player until you actually get to the NBA. If you're not in the PGA, you're just the guy who golfs. I golf. You know what? I, I could be the LIV because that's what you are. You're a you're a fraud. Get out of here. You're like the Big Ten. Oh, don't go that far with the Big Ten. You can't. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold What did I tell wait, you wait, last wait, week? Wait, 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 well, now, now, now they, now what's his name? Got his wish. He got me fired up. Okay, this is what these people want. Wait a minute. You cannot call Liv and compare it to the Big Ten. Period. What are you crazy? That's a line that's supposed to be safe for Jacob Craster. But no, I don't have him to kick around. I'm going to kick you around. You don't compare the Big Ten to Liv. No way. Are you crazy? So wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 Scott. I think JB forgot something. What? I produced this show. I can mute his mic. Oh, Big Ten is not a fraud. No way. No, no way. way. You run a show hey, with Ellis, all of Wait a minute. Ten. What the hell have you been drinking here, man? You have mudslides. You have a fifth of tequila. What the hell are you smoking there? Weed or whatever? Of course, weed isn't bad, you know. Purdue. <laughs> Purdue right? made the final two. How about this? Michigan Wolverines win the national title football. We're not talking about football. We're talking about basketball. Basketball. Wait, just because you got a guy from Brooklyn, New York, who doesn't even know what football is outside of Rutgers, you can't even compare the Big Ten because they're the money makers of all of college sports. Ellis, what the hell are you drinking and smoking? Wait a minute. Wait, what? 
Where where does Purdue play? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's the Big Ten. They play West the Big Ten and they play the championship. But West they West play Lafayette, the Big Ten. Big Ten. The, the first the first losers. You know, they're, they're second best. It's fine. They actually have done well in the tournament this year. I, I gotta give them credit, but generally the Big Ten doesn't do well in the tournament, except for Michigan State. It, it's well, you might be making nice. a little sense there, a little. I'm not giving you too much, Ellis. I'm not doing it, okay? Because you got Tom Izzo, you got Magic Johnson, and if it weren't for Michigan State, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson, okay, number one, you wouldn't have had the biggest audience ever in college uh, for a college game, I believe, and still is a record that holds today, if, I, if my memory serves correctly. So don't give me the business about this. New, bottom and, line is Ellis, okay, and hear me out, okay. And you know what? I feel bad for Ellis because he's got to sit next to me over at the NFL draft. And if you think it was bad tonight, wait till I give it to him when he's in person. I got, but hold it. I got a response for you. I got a response for you. Your you wait, wait, wait let me finish. Okay, so here's the deal, Ellis, okay. <laughs> say what you want to say about the Big Ten, but the reality is you're from Brooklyn, New York. You know what? Brooklyn, New York was once upon a whole time the home for the Dodgers. I do have to say, though, Brooklyn, New York does make some really good salt bagels, and they have a place down here. They have all kinds of bagel places. They start with Brooklyn. But don't you even dare compare live with Big Ten. No way. Are you crazy? <laughs> then you know what? Here's the problem with this guy. He's still jet lagged from L.A. So once he gets back in his groove, he'll be better. And you know what will happen tomorrow on the phone? We'll be talking like crazy brothers, and he don't care because Ellis has already figured out the entertainment aspect of this whole thing anyhow. And when he's now – being told to write, read my book two or three times, I'll write a book report, and we'll see what's what about the Big Ten and live. And in life, there's perception and reality, and I feel bad for him at the NFL draft. Uh, All right, well, well, you know, Travis Bird, I'm going to bed. You know what? I got an idea for you, Travis. If you ever need an alarm clock, listen to the show again, tape record it, and you, you want to go ahead, I'll wake you up in the morning with my, my tone of voice tonight. I'm going crazy here. And thanks, J.B. Ellis, for fighting <laughs> The incredible entertainment aspect because all these guys having a blast watching me go off like the Motor City. Mad mouth. There you go. All right. All but right. anyway. So anyways, where were we at with the Astros here? Am I supposed to say something on it? Bottom line, it should be 72 holes, not 54. Keep, you, have to have a fair, you have to have a fair playing field. I understand. But, you know, here's the thing about Rom. The man took three hundred fifty million dollars. You can all you can buy an awful lot of bagels for three hundred fifty million dollars, <laughs> for sure. And you know what? He can have all the dough inside of him, and you can and you can twirl him around, okay, your finger, and, and play with it before you go out there and cut it open and put your favorite cream cheese on there. And by the way, for those people that want to know what kind of cream cheese I like, I like the Nova Lox. It's expensive, but boy, is it awfully good. Look at this. Now you can hear a pin drop. They're all waiting for me to slow down. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I, I'm actually making a case where I'm louder than Stephen A. Smith. I can make Stephen A. Smith look like the quietest on and not sick them head on the planet. Stick me next to him and we'll see who's louder. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, I like whip, some whipped cream cheese too. That's pretty good stuff. All right. Any closing thoughts? I know we had a wild show tonight. I probably helped it out a little bit. Uh, you know, so anybody want to predict when I'm going to get to sleep tonight? Put it in the chat room. Uh, 10 15. No, no. Yeah. That, that's a generous guess. Uh, 11 35. What about you, Candy? Uh, are you going to sleep tonight? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, actually, Rocket Scientist is probably close. Maybe it's 4 a.m. for all I know. I don't know. No, I guess nobody knows. It depends on when the meds kick in. We'll leave it at that. So, meanwhile, hope you enjoyed this wild, wild, wild edition of the Sports Exchange. What a crew we have here tonight, man. Candy, we got JB, who obviously thinks he's with the live in the Big Ten, okay? And, of course, well, we have George Horn. <laughs> Big Ten basketball frauds. I told you that last week. Hey, frauds. Just... Not good at the tournament. Not good at the tournament. Purdue actually overperformed compared to what people thought this year. You know? Yeah. They're part of the Big Ten. No one would expect them to win a game. They, they like losing to 16 seeds. They learned from Virginia. 
Well, yeah, yeah, right. Well, the only difference with Virginia is they won the whole thing. So, I actually that's the only reason why I predict Purdue will beat Connecticut is I thought we'd see a one sixteen and a duplicate. But you know, remember one thing: I'm a journalist. I'm not in the prognostication business. So I look at it this way: it's my job to give you the information. If you bet, it's not my fault. Yeah, I just give you the info. And yeah, I got some great promoters now, don't I? Look at this: we got Rock. We got rocket scientists out there saying pundit, pundit tomorrow. We got Joshua Dorr talking pundit, pundit tomorrow. Okay, with the same host. I don't know. We'll see. Jacob Christopher must be out there somewhere, you know, insulting somebody. He must be looking at this show saying, hey, the legend of Jacob Christopher lives on. Because we got the chat room talking about pundit, pundit. Okay. Then he left it in my hands, uh, hopefully not screw it up. All right, Candy, so, we got anything so, to say? So wait, we have to address Jonathan Heidock with the same host. Pundit's Pundit is hosted by Scott, but on Thursday nights, there is also Fire Up, and that is hosted by myself and Smoking Jeremy B. There you go. No, no, we don't do no jingles here, uh, Joshua Dor. You want that jingle? You go out there and send an MP3 or however you uh, sing into those thingamajobbers. I don't even know how you sing in here. Just go ahead and send something through the email. And if you want to put it on there, Candy can go out there and stick it in there and you can do what you want there. So look at that. So I don't know. You're asking me to get into technological questions. Uh, don't hold your breath. Okay. But meanwhile, that does conclude this edition of the Sports Exchange, but it doesn't. Because I want everybody to let everybody know how they get a hold of themselves. George will lead off. I've got an uncle in the furniture business, Joshua Dor. Joshua Dor. That's all I know. Um, yeah, but now yeah. you know what you did, did you dummy? Because uh, you, you know what's going to happen? Uh, that what's his name? Uh, Joshua Dor is going to send you his little uh, thing of a jobber to to go out there and sing it. Boy, you are a sanctum head. Oh. I go ahead. Oh, really try to for this one. Try to reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com. Find me in the South Florida Tribune under the Motor City Tribune. I wrote a book right there. Candy's pointing to it. Uh, Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the Air. At the end of my column, I always have a link there to uh, to take a look at that book and maybe order a copy or two. And I look forward to all these great shows. Uh, Sports Exchange, Pundits, Pundit, Fire Up, and 108 Stitches, just a great part of this network and sideline sports glad to be with all you tonight very good all right jbl let's go ahead but, but don't say nothing about big 10 basketball or i'll mute you <laughs> <laughs> jb underscore the program sideline sports every tuesday 8 30 p.m eastern now on the believe network probably one of the biggest podcast networks in the world make sure you follow us there subscribe rate it five stars they never really did the podcast. We we're mostly video, but now we're doing podcasts. So go rate it five stars. But what are you waiting for? We'll still be here. And if you missed where you can find me, you found out already. I don't have a book yet, so I'll get the book eventually. Let Scott get his second book out. Things first. I get Scott's first book. What are you waiting for? Well, can I ask you a question, JB? Yeah. Uh, are you stupid? Yeah. Why didn't you even mention your <laughs> website, sick them head? Because it's running across the bottom. They should be oh, reading this There's some people night. listening to this. You know, you ever heard of that thing called the subway? You were probably born and grown up with it. You know, there is you know, a I radio was, I was, component I was here. Stuck, I was stuck on the Big Ten being front. Yeah, I know. And, and I and it'll probably stick in your mind for as long as I know you. Read off your website, you sick them in. I'll tell you, everybody uh, asks me who I could pick on a, on a given night. And you know what? You volunteered to get hammered tonight. Talk about your website. Listen, you proud of it? Sideline Sports Net. Of course I am. Candy built it. It's phenomenal. SidelineSportsNet.com. It, it's SidelineSportsNet.com. You can watch all the shows. You can see how my great writing, other people's great writing. We got some great Minnesota stuff on there from Jeff. Got a bunch of stuff. There's so much there. Got the Big East tournament where you can learn more about the championship, UConn Huskies. Again, championship. I think they beat Purdue. Um you know, plenty of other good stuff on there. Um, but JB underscore the program on Twitter. Don't forget, go to Believe, subscribe, rate five stars, and get Scott's book. Stop waiting. Good stuff. And George's book, too. Smart. And by the way, I, I got some articles. I, I'm not seeing. I, you know, I can't I really some, see. It's a glare, George. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. And, and by the way, JB, I got some stuff on your website, too, that I really enjoy putting yes. out there, a little bit of my history as well. That's okay. So if you, one thing we got to learn about this group, though, they'll like you more if you salute them because these are salute guys here. Okay. So I don't know. 
Well, go ahead. So, JB, yeah, he's got my book. Oh, good stuff, Joe. I'm just giving you a hard time tonight because I needed to give you one. Oh, I and I haven't seen it in a week, so that's okay. It was time to – it was JB Ellis night. All right, Candy, go ahead. Joshua, the, the, the question that is, is, JB, do you have Scott's book? JB, how far along are you in reading Scott's book? There I you finished. Go. I Did finished a while finish? ago. Yes. All right. No, we're, we're waiting on a review. Too. We're waiting on a review. We went through that, that whole Amazon thing, because I don't use Amazon. That's Amazon's okay. the devil. Can I, re can I review it on a different site? I'm, I'm, sure sure can. Can. I'm sure Barnes & Noble probably yeah. Yeah, will we'll look at that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, don't worry. Candy's a tech guru here. She'll find a way. Don't worry about it, Joe. Uh, uh, tonight is, I should retitle the name from March Madness to the Masters to the Pounding of J.B. Ellis. <laughs> no, to to the no, Big Ted fraudulent basketball salute. Yeah, I'll say, oh, we'll see which one To the muting of away. J.B. There we go. Let's mute him. Let, yeah, I might actually learn how to do it one day. I don't even, and folks out there, I don't even know how to mute anybody. I always get muted. And when I do something stupid for the chamber, once in a while, I do tend to forget I muted myself. And when they don't hear me, then I figure, oops, a little too late in the uh, regular room. But that's right. I'm learning to get around the mute button. Just I don't even know how to do it. So who I don't mute anybody. She does all that business. So meanwhile, it's what a great show tonight. It's the beauty of producing. See, I can mute Scott, I can mute George, and I can mute JB. So I'm the only one talking right now. You see, they think they're talking, but they can't. Ha, 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 ha. Well, ha, ha, ha. You know what you can do? Let's go back to one more promo with a book. Ha, 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 ha. One more <laughs> promo. Okay. If you see that red subscribe button, hit it. Like us, share us. Actually, also go out to Sideline. Like and share theirs as well because they have their own YouTube and we like to promote both both teams because we're both working to get better. We have an audio version of our shows are on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. Please, again, hit that red subscribe button. Go to our website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com. You can read Scott, George, JB, my ph photography, transcripts of different you know what's happening with the nfl let's face it the draft is coming up later this month scott george jb and myself we're all going um that'll be a fun time george keeps throwing up different things michigan uh, he's, he's he's trying to throw it in jb's face about the big 10 good 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 for you wow. it just hey i just happen to have it handy <laughs> But if you'd like to sponsor a show, you know, she we'll just keep straight. muting. We'll keep muting JB, you know. Um, but if you'd like to sponsor a show, advertise with us, call Scott, 954-304-4941. If I talk too fast, which I don't talk as fast as Scott does, but if I do, you can always go back, replay our YouTube. It's all scrolling across the bottom. But most importantly, there is this book. Scott wrote it, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. He also has a picture, I believe, of him and Tommy Lasorda when he was younger. He has pictures of him and Leslie Visser. He has quotes and all kinds of good stories. And it talks about his journey over his and how media has changed over 40 years in the business. Go get it on Amazon, Kindle, or Barnes & Noble, or Apple. Uh, Scott, anything else you can think of? Yeah, well, you're working on Google, and don't feel bad if some one of these uh, seats says I read emojis only. You know what? I want to know what half these emojis are, so that just shows you show you my level of expertise when it comes to that stuff. So, but meanwhile, I got to tell you, the chat room was absolutely fantastic. It really, <laughs> really is. I mean, you know, one thing about this chat room and this show. Is we no matter how loud I get, and if I start to get hoarse because of this, don't worry, I have about 20 hours to get it back for fun and fun. And anyway, you know what? Our, our goal is entertaining and have fun. And if I got to yell at the top of my lungs and everybody's rolling with that, then we did what we had to do. <laughs> our, our shows are designed here. <coughs> See, there it goes. All right. So there goes the throat. Okay. Going, going, but not gone yet. <laughs> But our All goal right. is to entertain you. And when you have a chat room as incredible as ours, it makes it really easy. And, I, and you, when you have a crew like this, which are awesome, baby, I had a little bit left, you know, left as in Dick Vitale, who once upon a time we worked with. Okay. 
it makes it easy for us to do, focus on our objective. So we want to thank everybody else in the chat room. And I issued you the challenge. You start coming up with some pundit, pundit topics. And I'll tell you what, there's a strong possibility they're going to get at least on one. Uh, they'll all collect them and we'll put them on every week, uh, one at a time. So with that said, that, on behalf of Candy Abling, A.B. Ellis, and George Icorn, this is Scott Morgan Roth, the Motor City Man Mouth, about to turn into Mild Mouth in a moment. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Sports Exchange. And you know what? Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah.